this first weekend in July, there'll be a full moon. And if it's clear, you should see it shining bright and round. But a few times a year, two, three, sometimes four, the moon looks a little different or a lot different. This is the kind of eclipse where the moon will look a little different. That darkness that you see on this edge of the moon is part of the Earth's shadow. Well, almost. Let's make a shadow and see what I mean. Here I have a little ball. It's on a knitting needle so that I can hold it up and imagine it's the Earth. Here's quite a bright flashlight that I can shine on the Earth and we'll imagine this flashlight is the sun. Well, it gives a nice effect of the daytime side and the nighttime side on the ball. And around the ball, the space is filled with light from the sun, but behind the ball, there's a dark space. And we'll be able to see it if we let that shadow be cast on a piece of paper. Quickly, I'll pin up a piece of paper here. And I'll hold the ball in front of it and illuminate it with the light from the flashlight. And you see a nice shadow. And when the ball is pretty close to the paper, the shadow is quite sharp and distinct. But if I move the light source away and if I move the ball away, I see that there is a dark part of the shadow and a fuzzy lighter patch of shadow around the dark part. Now I'm in front of a picture of myself making the shadow. So this is actually a picture of my hand and my other hand is holding the flashlight shining on the earth, making that shadow. The dark part in the middle is called the umbra of the shadow. It's where the ball blocks all of the light from the flashlight. The flashlight, like the sun, gives off light from many different parts of itself. And in some places in the shadow, all of that is blocked, but in some places in the shadow, light from part of the flashlight is blocked by the ball, just as in some places in the Earth's shadow, part of the light from the sun is blocked by the Earth. The part that's partially blocked by the Earth is called the penumbra. The penumbra is the lighter part of the shadow around the umbra, the darkest part. Sometimes when a word has pen in front of it, it means almost something. So if an umbra is a shadow, then a penumbra is almost a shadow. The last word on this list is peninsula, which is almost an island, insula island. It has water around most of it, but not all of it. That's the last word on the list. The second to last word on the list is penultimate. Ultimate means final or last and penultimate means second to last. I'm not sure I know any other pen words like this. Maybe you can think of some. When the penumbral eclipse happens this weekend, we won't see the whole shadow of Earth cast against the background of space, but we can visualize it using data from NASA's eclipse web pages. These are useful when you're looking up things about past eclipses or want to know about future eclipses. And we can see from here that at the height of the eclipse, which in California is at 931, just a little bit of the moon will be in just the edge of the penumbra of Earth's shadow. If you're in California, the maximum eclipse will happen not too long after the sun goes down. If you're farther east, since the world is round, it's a different time of day for you, and you'll see the eclipse later at night. In fact, if you're really far east, it will be past midnight when you see the eclipse, and it won't be the 4th of July, it'll be the 5th of July. When I see a map like this, I want to pause and make sense of it. So if you like, stop the video and see what else you can learn from this map. I'm not sure how much the penumbra of the Earth's shadow is going to make an effect of dimming on the moon. It might be a tiny bit, it might be such a tiny bit that it looks like an ordinary full moon. But if it's clear, I'll go out and find out. And if you can see the moon that night, you can too.